Does God tell why disasters come? This is a good question. Why does God tell... Um, does God tell why? We tell a lot of people. But does God tell why? And basically, it depends on what you're asking. Number one, does God warn of calamities? Yes. Here, let me show you one. Look in Leviticus, um, either 26 or 27. I never forget reading this chapter. Um, the most moving time, it's 20, oh, it's 26. Um, I was with a, a group when we were speaking in Russia, and it was uh, two or three elders uh, from the church, and we had a layover in Warsaw, flying into Russia. And I said, hey, you know, it was like four or five hours, and you know, the Polish airport's very small and very lax security, and I said, hey, let's rent a car and run down town. I said, I have something I've always wanted to do in Warsaw. And you know, the ghetto in Warsaw where the Nazis surrounded the Jewish ghetto and, and basically walled them in and then just artilleried them and dropped bombs on them just to kill them all. Well, the Jews went um, increasingly underground and uh, tried to hide in the sewers and everything. And there was one place where they all congregated and uh, the Nazis found them and they actually just uh, incinerated them in there. And so that place, surprisingly enough, has become a restaurant. I mean, they preserved it. It's underground and it's a high-end restaurant. And so we went down there and, and had um, dinner and I said, I want to come here because I want to read Leviticus 26 in this spot. And if you look at Leviticus 26, it's the promises of blessings and cursings. That's what Leviticus 26 is. And you can read it on your own. The first 13 verses are, starting in verse three, if you walk with me, I'll bless your socks off. But verse 14, if you don't obey me, you are in trouble and you will struggle. And, and it basically says, um, I mean, they would be wasting diseases in verse 16. Um, I, I will break your pride and make the, verse 19, the heavens like iron. And, and basically it says there that, that they are going to have the most horrible things. They're gonna be hunted down, the Jews, and exterminated. And so we read this whole 26th chapter uh, in, in that ghetto and uh, remembered that God warns of consequences. So the first answer is, does God tell why disasters uh, come? If you're asking, does God warn of consequences? Yes. Um, in fact, this week, in the Biblical Discipleship and Counseling class on Wednesday night, which is firing back up for uh, next round, that's actually what this month is about, the consequence engine. For even Christians, for even born-again people, there are, be not deceived, God's not mocked, whatever you sow, you're gonna reap. If you sow to the spirit, you'll reap life everlasting. If you sow to the flesh, you'll reap corruption. That's true for us, as well as for lost people. For the covenant people, an example is Leviticus 26. And what Leviticus 26 says is, if you all do not obey me, you're gonna, the Jews, you're gonna run for your life, you're, and it's horrible if you read it. And so, yes, God tells why. That would basically be the why for the Holocaust. God's, God warned them. By the way, it worked. Did you know that? Did you know that the Jews never became idolatrous after they were wiped out by the Babylonians and the Assyrians? They just became secular and, and not seeking the true and living God, which, which led to the diaspora from AD 70. But warning of consequences. Number two, does God explain why we have personal disasters, you know, like um, the sweet family in Milwaukee that were driving in the minivan with their six children and the mud flap fell off on the semi in front of them. It scooted under their car. It punctured their gas tank. The car exploded, engulfed in flames. The mom and dad fell out the doors and all the children died. Does God tell, and they were Christians. I think he was a pastor. I don't remember. Does God tell why personal 
calamities come? If that, see, I, I, um, I'm not sure because uh, I'm not sure exactly when this question is asked me in the hallway what you're getting at, but does God tell why personal calamities come? Well, let's look. Let's look at Job, okay? This is one of my favorite um, people in the Bible. Turn to the book of Job, and I want to show you something very interesting um, because this whole book is about calamities. The whole book of Job is, is a chronicle of calamity. And, and what, what I think is amazing is, is what the Lord says in verse eight. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord said to Satan. So Satan got near enough to the Lord to talk to him. Actually says he came in front of the Lord. But it showed up when the Lord is reviewing the angels. Satan himself, one of the angels, comes in. And the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Now listen to this referral. We have all kinds of referrals, you know, and people give us endorsements and, you know, they'll, they'll help us out, you know, like you want to go work at a camp and you have to get a referral letter. This is God's referral. Look at verse eight. Have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him on the earth? God says, I know the DNA, I know every molecule of every human being on this planet and there's nobody alive like him. Not only does he say that, he is blameless and upright and he fears God and he shuns evil. God knew what he was like in secret. He knew what he was like from the inside out. Nobody in the Old Testament gets a higher endorsement than Job. So Job 1.8 is amazing. Okay, so what happens to Job? You know what happens to Job. Uh, he loses his whole estate, all of the animals and, and all of, of the people working his fields. Uh, he loses that, he loses all 10 of his children. Uh, they are killed in a storm precipitated by Satan. He loses the, the kindness of his wife. She becomes very critical and telling him to curse God and die. I mean, not a real happy camper wife, you know? And then Job loses his health. So he, basically, he loses everything. You talk about losing it all, he does. Um, loses it all. But he is blameless, upright, and God's man. If there's anybody in the world that God should explain why he took everything away from him, He's a candidate. Does the Lord do that? Well, turn to chapter 40. You know what's interesting? And, and even look at, at Job's um, visceral response. But look what he says in verse 40. More of the Lord answered Job. And this is what he said. Shall the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Verse 3, and Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer you? Now look what he does in verse four. I cover my mouth. I lay my hand on my mouth. You know what he says? I am in no place to question why. Of all the people alive, he should have. There's nobody like him. But when he's caught sight of the Lord in chapter 38, he goes like this. I can't question God. Continue. Once I have spoken, but I will not answer. Twice, but I will proceed no further. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. And this is what the Lord said. This is the, the if you want the word purpose, uh, the purpose or reason for disasters and calamities. It's, this is the heart of it. Verse seven. Now prepare yourself like a man, and I will question you, and you answer me. See, God wants us to answer some questions to him when we go through disasters. And the Lord goes through them, and, and look at the result, and you can read it yourself, but look at chapter 42, uh, verse five. This is the very ending of the book. And, and this is what is so wonderful about you know, reading this. At the end of the book, you know, in Job 40, uh, Job covers his mouth, and then we get to God finishing, and in Job 42, 5, 
He says this, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I abhor and repent in dust and ashes. Remember we talked about repentance this morning? Job saw his sinfulness and God's holiness. And this whole process of losing his children, of losing his wealth, of losing his health, of losing his friendship and fellowship with his wife, all of those things God used he wasn't a bad guy. He shunned evil. He, he pursued the Lord, but he wasn't as deeply aware of his fallenness and sinfulness as God wanted him to be. And so the Lord brought him literally to the end of himself. And he repents in dust and ashes. And you know what the Lord does. Look at verse 10. The Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before, even children. You know, someone, someone once said, well, wait a minute, he only got 10 children. Yeah, but he had 10 in heaven. He still had 20. Does the Lord explain why um, the Twin Towers fell? No, he doesn't. Does he explain why Sandy Hook was shot up? No, he doesn't. But does he warn of consequences? Does some of it, our problem in America is because we've gotten rid of God? Did you know that Christianity is like control rods to sin? Sin is like a nuclear reactor. And it, if sin is left alone, it just, it, just, it just increases and it works, it feeds off itself and sin multiplies. The book of Proverbs says that when the righteous rule that sin is lessened, but when the unrighteous rule that sin multiplies. In America, even though we're not really a Christian nation, we never really have been a Christian nation. Uh, you know, that concept is very interesting to think about but there's been a lot of Christians in America, but all the Christian influence has been like control rods into the nuclear reactor. But starting, you know, with Dewey and the education system and getting God out of schools and getting God out of science and getting God out of philosophy and getting God out of everything and no praying and no Bibles and school teachers can't even carry Bibles and some school systems, you know, it's, you're really in trouble and danger. It's, there is a consequence to pulling the rods out, and we're seeing that. We're seeing evil mushrooming in America. The Muslims are right. We are in the sense of the great Satan because we put out more pornography and witchcraft stuff than all the rest of the world put together in our movies. We're just conditioning the world into the occult and into immorality. So in the sense of are all the mass murders a consequence, there is an argument for that. But does God explain for each one why? No. But what about personal disasters like Job and Paul have? Well, look what happens right here. Lest I should be exalted because of this trip to heaven, verse 7 of 2 Corinthians 12, by the abundance of the revelation, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I plead with the Lord three times that I might depart from me. And you know, it's good if, you, if we have any kind of you know, reoccurring uh, sicknesses and illnesses and cancer and struggles and infirmities, we can ask the Lord over and over to remove them. But most of the time, we'll get the same answer Paul did. And he said to me, no, I'm not gonna take away your infirmity. My grace is sufficient for you. Do you know what God was telling him he was? the God who is enough. He says, I'm El Shaddai. I, I want you to know you have enough if you just have me. And so Paul uh, learned in 2 Corinthians 12 that this thorn in the flesh was for him to, verse nine, find that the grace of Christ was sufficient, the strength of Christ was perfected in his weakness, and Paul's testimony is at the end of verse nine, most gladly therefore will I rather boast of my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So yes, sometimes God tells about personal disasters that come, but he doesn't always explain the big ones unless they're consequences. <laughs> 